We all know it. Walked it every day. But none of them were like these. The world's most dangerous ways to school. Climbing, freezing, paddling for hours, all for the chance of a better life. Risky, spectacular, and sometimes just simply beautiful. The world's most dangerous ways to school. Little children, they walk through the Kenyan savanna. Each day, a journey full of adventure. And dangers. But for those who come here for schooling, it's an ordinary way to school, including thirst, hunger, and wild animals. Everyday life on one of the world's most dangerous ways to school. Southwestern Kenya, far away from the cities, the broad expanse of the savanna. For many centuries, it has been the living space of the Maasai. Cows and goats, for generations their most prized possessions. Nothing governs their life more than their livestock. The Maasai are partially nomadic, their settlements simple, their houses plain. As soon as their cattle have nothing left to feed on, the Maasai move on. That's why their villages lie so far apart. And it's exactly the reason why the Maasai children have such a long and dangerous way to school. Four a.m. Before going off to school, the night watch is the task at hand. Eight-year-old Moseka guards the family's cows and goats. Sometimes wild animals sneak into the villages at night a threat to everyone. I've already seen lions and hyenas. They tried to kill our goats, but I am brave. When dawn sets in at around six, the Maasai village Kasiole comes to life. Museka's night watch ends, and his way to school begins. When I have to go to school after having guarded the goats at night, I am incredibly tired. Twelve families live in the village of Casiola. Most of Moseka's friends stay at home and tend the cattle. Many parents are afraid to send their children off on the 10-kilometer long way to school right through the savannah. At a quarter past eight, in two hours, school lessons start. Little time left to have a wash. Students like Moseka from all across the region are setting off this morning on their way to the only school far and wide. Ten kilometers away, the 12-year-old Kotangai is just about to set off in the village of Ene Ramito Shoregi. Normally, Kotangai sleeps at the boarding school, but once a month, she needs to go home to fetch the school fees. Kotangai has one great goal for when she has finished school. I was in a town once where 500 people lived. 
I would really like to live there. Koitangai has one of the farthest ways to school ever, almost 20 kilometers. Her mother, Nama Nu, accompanies her daughter for a short while. Because especially the area near the village is extremely dangerous. Many animals are hiding in the bushes and forests. They have repeatedly attacked and injured villagers. It's a wild place. There are so many dangers, especially the elephants, but also the monkeys and lions. I have to at least bring her to where the bushes end, and then I can still watch her a few meters further. They walk together until they reach the peak of the hill. Then, Kotangai's mother must return in order to attend to the farm and the animals. Take good care of yourself. Here, take the money. That should be enough for one month. And now off you go. And be careful. It seems peaceful, but it's dangerous for the children. There are elephants and lions, and sometimes there are people simply up to no good when it comes to children. That's all part of their way to school. I have no telephone, I am not rich. That's why it takes many days before I know my little one has arrived safely at school. In the course of the next few days, Namanu will ask everybody if they have seen her daughter, whether she has arrived at school, whether she is fine. Her way to school leads the 12-year-old south through the Kenyan Zerig shrubland. In the Maasai village, Il Nachot, the day starts far less early for the students. Four-year-old Ledionka takes his time. His home is no more than an hour's walk away from his school. Ledionka is a half-orphan. His father died in an accident on the fields. In fact, his mother could well use him at home to tend to the animals. But she wants him to become more than a farmer. And her son, Larionka, likes going to school. We can run and play on our way and just mess around. Sometimes we also fetch some water on our way. But most of the time, we are hungry. Like most Maasai, Ledionka almost exclusively lives off tea and milk. He very rarely eats meat. Not really a whole lot of energy for his tiring and dangerous way to school. At shortly before 7 a.m., night watchman Moseka is ready to set off on his way to school from his village, Cassiole. One and a half hours before school starts. Due to the night watch, Moseka has been on his feet for more than 12 hours. Often his only breakfast, a few drops of milk. Moseka's mother worries. In the last few days, elephants often visited the area. The Maasai consider them to be one of the most dangerous species of the wilderness. Recently, one of our neighbors was killed by an elephant. She was walking the same path my child takes to school. That's why I keep saying to my son, during the week, you must sleep somewhere near school. Don't come home. Find yourself a hiding place until the weekend. But there, too, of course, something could happen. Moseka's older brother, Saruni, accompanies him and his girlfriend, Soila, the first few meters. 
so Rennie knows both need to eat meat at some point. On your way to school, pass by the place where they do the slaughtering. Today they'll have meat and blood. Go on. Drinking animal blood, a ritual which is supposed to give the male Maasai power and strength. By tradition, the Maasai never slaughter at home, only at ritual places and for special occasions. The slaughtering grounds lie a few kilometers away from the school. But to get there is dangerous, and the further the two walk away from the village, the hungrier they get. We don't get anything to eat at school, only the boarders. Very seldom do we get a share. The last time we got something was months ago. I am hungry, and drinking blood makes me stronger. Their way to school passes the slaughtering grounds and will lead Moseka and Soili through the Leopard's Valley, infamous for roaming predators. It takes courage to go to school here. Meanwhile, 12-year-old Koi Tangai has been on her way for one and a half hours already. The monsoon season is about to begin. It is still dry. The courses of the rivers are nearly dried up. Koitangai takes a shortcut and walks to the Nonnonyorich riverbed. In English, it translates to something like liquid salt. The soils of the region are very saline. Time for a little refreshment in this heat, which is increasing by the minute. It's early in the morning, and already the temperature lies at 25 degrees Celsius. It's difficult to find something to eat, and finding water is nearly impossible. I could walk along here for ages without finding drinkable water. Right now, I'd love to have some tea, some rice, and peas would be great, too. Koitangai is in a hurry. She won't make it on time for the start of the lessons, but she wants to arrive there for the lunch break so she can eat there if she's on time. <laughs> Barely an hour before school starts in the Maasai village Ilnachot. Derionka too needs to go. Even though he is only four years old, he has to march through the wild steppe. A very worried mother stays behind. There are wild animals here. I've already faced some elephants myself. Once my little boy came across an elephant. I still remember when he came home and he showed me how big it was and how it behaved. Even with as much as we know about the dangers, we also know it'll make him stronger for the future. I leave his fate to God. There's nothing I can do. I can only hope that God may help him on his way to school. Larionka doesn't yet dare to go on his own. 
Every morning, he meets up with his friends, Senchura and Sime. No matter how dangerous the way to school may be, it definitely is a good idea to know it in detail. It's actually quite simple. To get to school, you just have to go past the big tree, over to the other big tree, and then on to the next one. We don't go near that village over there. We must go this way. And then we are almost there. And so the three youngest set off on their long journey through the Kenyan savanna. The student's destination, the Antuka Primary School, the only school within a radius of about 20 kilometers. While almost 200 boarding students pass the time waiting for their lessons to start, simultaneously, the same amount of students march through the savanna every day. Their teacher, Mbuku Kilayo, comes from Kenya's capital city, Nairobi. Her job is to teach the children Swahili, English, and math. Only a fraction of the Maasai children go to school at all. They speak their own language and maintain their own culture. I respect the way the Maasai live but they have to learn how important school is and try harder to bring their children here, or else they will keep tending cows and will have no chance of becoming something else. Yeah. On an average, four out of five Maasai children stay with their families during the day and do not learn how to read or write their entire life. Those children who do go to school hardly ever arrive on time for the lessons. It's a good thing to have a teacher who knows from personal experience how dangerous the way to school through the savanna can be. I go a different way to school than the children do. But I too once saw an elephant. It stood in front of me, and I was really scared. Elephants are very dangerous. And from then on, I knew, if a child is late and says, an elephant came across my way, I will never punish him or her. The Kenyan Savannah a huge open-air zoo with an incredible diversity of species. Seen from the perspective of parents who send their children to school every day, it is an unfenced zoo, though, an open space where the natural law of eat or be eaten is part of everyday life. Eight-year-old Mosika and his fellow student, Suile, are approaching the most dangerous place in the region, the Leopard Cliffs. On their way there, they meet the giants of the savannah. Giraffes can be up to six meters tall. In contrast to many other animals, they are absolutely harmless for the children. Take a look! I like giraffes the most. Aren't they huge? Southern Kenya remains one of the areas in the world with the most diverse animal population. It is a moment of joy and of relaxation for Moseka and Soile.
Their way leads the two students into the Entuka Valley, the palm oasis. The idol is treacherous. The valley is leopard territory. Meanwhile, four-year-old Lerionka and his friends are having a very special kind of fun. Whether it's antelopes, gazelles, or gnus, most animals are afraid of humans, even if they are just little school children. It's best when we get to chase the animals. As soon as one animal runs away, the others follow. And so, Larionka and his friends run to school, together with gnus and gazelles. Shortly before school starts, Koi Tangai hasn't even got as far as halfway. She is hungry and looking for ilua plants in a field, a small bitter fruit. But it's a bad time of the year for her search. Months of heat have dried up everything. Koi Tangai taps on the bushes to see where the ants scuttle, because that's where the few edible fruits are. The fruit doesn't satisfy my appetite, but at least it gives me some energy. Even if Koitangai gets tired, even if the heat, which has by now reached 30 degrees Celsius, is wearing her out, she does not take long breaks. Because at noon, the boarders receive their food. If she is too late, she won't get anything to eat until the next morning. The four-year-old Lerionka and his friends are suffering from the heat, too. Luckily enough, one of the rare water holes of the region lies close to their path. It's going to be the only water they will get in the course of the next few hours. We have to pass by here if we are thirsty. We don't get any water at school. The three youngest ones have made it. Only one kilometer lies ahead of them. Meanwhile, Moseka and Soile are coming closer to the most dangerous spot of the Ntuka Valley, the Leopard Cliff, more dreaded than any other place in the region. The cliff. Every Maasai knows somewhere up there, the big cats roam. But whoever wants to go to the slaughtering grounds must pass here. I've been here once before. That time, the leopards were up there. No one knows for sure why, of all places, the leopards hang about up there by the rocks. One thing Moseka's mother knows for sure, though, is that she has forbidden her son to go near the cliffs. Several Maasai have been attacked and injured badly in the area already. 
I am a woman. I'm not allowed to go to the place where they do the slaughtering, but I know it is a dangerous place. There are leopards, buffaloes, and other dangerous animals. And now, in late summer, another danger is imminent. The weather. When the first rainfalls pelt on the dry soil after a long period of drought, they flood the land immediately. The weather is unpredictable and changes at short notice. Oseka's mother is constantly worried about her son. She tries to distract herself through work, but her thoughts keep returning to her son and his dangerous way to school. The rain is as bad as the wild animals. Whether a child is washed away by the rain or eaten by an animal makes no difference. The child dies. Rain, normally a blessing for the Maasai. It's good for the plants, the animals, and their drinking water supply. But it's also dangerous for the children. But it seems as if the children are lucky. In the distance, with the school eyes, the sun is shining. Larionka and his friends have nearly made it. While they are walking the last few meters, they have some time to dream of their future. When I grow up, I want to own more cows than anyone else in the world. A decent Maasai, so they say, owns at least 50 cows and goats. A quarter past eight in the morning. While the others are still on their way, Larionka's group reaches school first. And just in time for the morning assembly. Kenya has 40 million inhabitants. Only a fraction, about 300,000 of them, are Maasai. This minority's culture is non-existent in the regular lessons. Nine classes altogether, each with about 40 students, assemble in the schoolyard and hoist the Kenyan flag, chanting the national anthem. Teachers know that, like every day, some desks will remain vacant for the time being. When school starts, many students are still on their way in the wide expanses of the savannah. Like Koitangai. Seven kilometers away, the girl meanwhile makes her way through the bushes. Often monkeys are hiding in the trees and snakes in the bushes. And there are other dangers imminent too. There is no other way to school. I have to take this route. I know there are animals here, elephants and buffaloes. But the school is supposed to change my life. I simply have to take this route. Just a few steps ahead, indications grow stronger that the way to a better life is going to be very dangerous, also today. This is elephant poo. This heap here is old. The other one is fresh. Maybe two or three days. 
I'm afraid of elephants. Elephants. The greatest danger of all. Koitangai can only hope she will not encounter one. The eight-year-old Musika and his fellow student Soile also have to be careful and hope to avoid meeting a leopard. They took a detour especially in order to be able to eat some meat after weeks. At 9 a.m., they reach the slaughtering grounds. Are you slaughtering now? Yes, we're going to slaughter today. We have a few goats. But it'll take a while. Come round after school. You'll get your share then. Disappointed and hungry, the two move on. In the meantime, Koi Tangai has a queasy feeling. Elephants, very close by. You have to walk against the wind. It's dangerous. If they smell you, they kill you. Up until now, nobody actually knows when and why elephants attack humans. But every Maasai knows of the danger. And every child learns at an early age about the against the wind strategy. It is essential for the children's survival. And then, Koitangai discovers another danger, bulls. I keep my eyes glued to the grass and keep watching the direction of the wind. It seems to work. More and more, the girl manages to disappear out of the animal's sight. Meanwhile, Mosika and Soile have almost made it. But since they still have empty stomachs, they eat anything they find by the wayside. The bitter Ilmisigiyu fruit fills their stomachs, at least a bit. I like eating this, but it doesn't give us as much energy as meat. We find this fruit quite often, but meat and blood are incredibly rare. Ten a.m. at the Intuka Primary School. While other students are still on their way to school, Larionka, at four, is learning English and math. Kupai is one of the few teachers at school who is a Maasai. When she was young, just about five percent of the Maasai went to school. Today, there are four times as many Maasai students. It's not easy for the children. They learn Swahili here and they learn English, but most of the parents only speak Maasai. So at home they teach their parents. We teach the children and they teach their parents. Mm -hmm. 
Larionka's mother also never went to school. She can hardly count, nor read or write. Sometimes he teaches her a few words in the national language, Swahili, or reads from his exercise book. The students here have to learn everything by themselves. No one can help them with their homework. And almost no parent knows what going to school is all about. Learning, and also having a little fun. I like counting best. Moseka and Soile have made it too, at shortly after half past ten. Where are you coming from? Why are you so late? What? Huh? We were at the slaughter place. Where? That's dangerous. I should really give you a good beating. What about you? Why didn't you look after them? Did you make them go there? There's food there. You're supposed to be here on time. In spite of the punishment, both are glad to have finally arrived. They are late often, miss more than a third of the classes, mostly the English and Swahili lessons. Often they only arrive in time for math, which is the third lesson of the day. Twelve-year-old Koitangai has meanwhile left the herd of elephants behind. She seems safe. Koitangai was the first to leave in the morning. Now, she'll be the last to arrive. Today, at least, she wants to be in time for lunch. But in the long run, she is expecting a whole lot more. If I were living at home in my village, I'd have another year or two before I get married, that's for sure. But I hope this won't happen. I want to go to school and get a higher education. With that, I want to leave and become a doctor and one day be able to build a house for my parents. Maybe I'll even have a car. At shortly before 12, Koitangai reaches her destination, school, just in time for lunch. But beforehand, she still has to deliver the fee for a month of boarding school to the headmaster himself, 750 Kenyan shillings. That's about six euros 50, a lot of money for her family. They have to sell two goats in order to pay for a year of school. The goats are their only most important belonging. Hello. Did you have a safe trip? You're late. Oh, you got the money. That's good. What's your name? Here's your boarding school certificate for this month. Twelve o'clock, lunch break. For all boarders, this means food. There are two meals to choose from every day. The distribution takes place according to age. The youngest first. After ten minutes, Koitangai too receives her meal. Beans, her reward for a five hour long dangerous march through the savanna. I'm happy to be here, finally something to eat, and having lessons again. 
but I miss my parents and often think of them. Moseka and Soile also have to pay a small fee for the school, about one euro per month. But they are not boarders, and therefore, they get nothing to eat. During the break, I am always very hungry. I wish I'd get the same food the boarding students receive. I want school to finish so I can eat some meat and drink some blood. Little Lerionka gets nothing to eat either. But at least school finishes at 12 o'clock for the youngest ones. And so he heads off home together with his friends. I got to hurry. I have to tend to the cows. But I like that. I could play there. Dawdling? Out of the question for the little ones. The three Maasai children have another hour of marching through the Kenyan savanna ahead of them. After school, Larianka, unlike other four-year-olds, cannot simply play or frolic around. Work is awaiting him instead. Since the death of his father, there is no one else to look after the cattle. Good that you're back. That makes me happy. Larionka only just has time for a sip of milk for lunch. His mother, Senchura, would gladly send him to boarding school, but she cannot afford it. She can dream, however. I want my children to learn a lot. I wish my son would one day become president of Kenya. Not only his mother, little Lerionka too, dreams of the great wide world. I want to be a teacher one day. And then I want to travel and see other countries. And then I want to return and visit my mother. Thus, another school day ends for Ledionka. He will tend the cows till dusk and then go to sleep. For the other school children, the day still goes on. Moseka and Soile finish school at 2 p.m. While their classmates play, the two set off on their way to the Maasai slaughtering grounds. They are hoping to eat some meat for the first time in many weeks, and little Moseka hopes to drink some blood. Koitangai finishes school at 4 p.m. She can retreat with her friends. And while the other girls play, she still contemplates school and her future. I don't like it when girls my age have to get married. I want to change that through what I learn here. 
With this hope, Koi Tangai goes to sleep. In a month's time, she will return home to her parents to fetch money for the boarding school fee. At 5 p.m., Oseka and Suila have finally made it. They have reached the slaughtering grounds. Moseka's elder brother is there too. Both students finally want to eat something. Eight-year-old Moseka is awaiting a ritual reserved solely for the male Maasai, drinking blood. Blood makes me strong. According to the belief of the Maasai, the blood of the goat will give Moseka strength during the next days. Meanwhile, Suila is still waiting to be allowed to eat something. Long, hungry minutes before at last she may. The inner organs, like the kidneys, are reserved for the women. The meat largely goes to the men. The students have made it for today. In spite of all the dangers and struggles, one thing Moseka is sure about. He wants to stay here even after having finished school all his life. My greatest wish is to have many, many cows. I like being a Maasai. We have cows, we have goats. That's all I need in my life. The Maasai children's day is drawing to an end. Moseka and Suile will sleep by the campfire tonight and brace themselves for tomorrow morning. They will have to set off very early on their way to school through the African savanna. They all want to learn something each for his or her own personal dream.